Last week Wednesday, Pastor Ross decided to give me a, a little faith check. They started to give me an offering. And I was like, hey, I'm not preaching tonight. He said, no, aren't you? Said, Wait, let me check. You know, and my heart skipped the beat because uh, I didn't want to miss it. Because I didn't have a message last week, Wednesday. But I have a message tonight, amen? And uh, I, I told Brother Aaron that he was part of the conspiracy with Pastor Ross. Now we had a good laugh, but man, I was uh, I was a little bit shaken there for a while because uh, I really didn't have a message. And um, praise God that I had this message. I have this message for tonight, and I got two confirmations today. Um, as I was studying last night and putting together my notes and making sure, well, trying to make sure it ended up where I wanted it to be. But you know, God always has his way. He always, he always has the last laugh, right? So I have all these notes and I'm trying to arrange them. And I get a text. And the text is to all the mighty men and women. It says, hey, pray for our pastors. Their flight got canceled. For no reason. Well, of course, immediately we all hit the throne room, right? My phone blows up. There's text after text after text. All these mighty men and women texting, praying. And a few minutes go by, and a few minutes go by. And then they get another text. And it says, hey, we got a flight. I'm like, all right, praise God. Yes. So we start texting again. Now we're praising the Lord. Yes. Right? We're praising the Lord. Hey. Our prayers got heard. Yes. And I'm like, okay. And then I wake up this morning and I get another text. And it says, continue praying. You know? So okay, yeah, we start texting back again. We're praying continually, never ceasing. Amen? And you know, today was kind of a... There wasn't a lot of people, but it was a kind of a busy day for me. You know, different procedures, checking on different things, um, making sure me and the boss and the other workers are all on the same page. And I was like, man, I want to review my notes. And every time I would sit down, I'd get a call on the radio, or, you know, uh, I looked at the time, and oh, shucks, I gotta go do this round, and check this, and check that. And even during my lunch, I figured, okay, my lunch, I got some quiet time. I got my lunch, I ate my lunch, I had my notebook. And before, I just finished my lunch, and before I could start, reviewing my notes, I get a call on the radio. I say, hey, can you go meet this person at this place? Uh, can you open this and you can you open that for this people? Uh, okay. And the boss goes, uh, were you eating your lunch? I said, uh, yeah, but I'm done. He said, okay, you come in 10 minutes, come to the office, and then you can take these guys down to the basement and open the gym. I said, okay. So 10 minutes go by, I, I'm trying to study, but I can't concentrate, you know, so I, I put my stuff away, I go to the office, and I'm waiting for these guys, and they're troubleshooting on the computer, trying to do something, trying to figure something out with the computer system, and the boss is like, uh, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna get them for you. And okay, I just feed them downstairs. So the boss calls the guy and says, hey, can you go with Randy? Go down to the gym and start working on that. And anyway, I didn't get to review my notes like I wanted to. And I was beginning to think like, man, you know, I hope I don't miss it. I hope everything goes good. I hope I hear the Lord. That's the main thing. I don't want to lead the people astray. I don't want to give my opinion. I don't want to give my word or what the Lord says or what His word says. Amen. And I get a call and this is testimony time. 
as you can see, my title is no doubt about it. God is good. Amen. Right? Amen. There's no doubt about it. At about 1:30, I get a phone call, an unexpected phone call, and it's my rental agent. And he calls me and he says, "Hey, Randy, how you doing?" I said, "I'm doing good, man." They ask me, "Oh, how you doing? All these things going on and stuff like that, man." I'm just, I'm doing good, one day at a time. And he goes, "Well, just wanted to call you and let you know that uh, we're not going to charge you rent for April." Yeah. I'm like, "Oh yeah, thank you, Jesus." Yeah. And I'm like, "All right." And then he goes, "Oh, and and by the way, um." I don't know, last month was a little tight and you had to pay the rent a little bit late, so we're going to waive that late fee. And I'm like, yeah, praise yeah. God. <laughs> right? Praise God. I'm like, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. God is good. No doubt about it. God is good. Amen. Yes. And I'm, I'm, I talked with him for a little bit more and I hang up the phone and I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Because you know, the president, he's talking about, oh, the governor, excuse me, he's talking about doing all these things, you know, passing a bill, passing a legislature, or whatever, to get, you know, stop the evictions, but if these things goes on, and um, all these little things like payments and working out different things. And they're just talking about it. But God is doing it. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, I'm in awe, like, wow. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm sitting there. And about 10, maybe 15 minutes later, I get a phone call. I mean, a text, another text. And it says, we're on the plane. In San Francisco, it leaves at 5 o'clock. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Another festival, and hallelujah. Our pastors are on, getting on the plane. They're getting ready to leave San Francisco, I believe. Right? And I'm like, God, you're awesome. No doubt about it, you're good. Yes. You're good. God is good, amen? amen? And that was enough confirmation for me. I never reviewed my notes. I tried and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to let it lie the way it is. And hopefully the word comes out. And if anything goes wrong, it's me and not God, amen? Because God is good. So... I'm going to read from the Message Bible in Psalm 73 in verse 1. And I don't have a Message Bible, so I'm going to use my phone. And I'm, I'm going to read verse 1 and then have you guys sit down. Amen. Let me know when you guys got, got it. Alright. So Psalm 73, verse 1. In the message Bible it reads, No doubt about it. God is good. Good to the good people, good to the good hearted. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We bless you and praise you for what you're doing, what you're what you've already done, and what you're about to do. I just thank you for the people that showed up tonight and those that are watching online with it now or later on in the archives. Just thank you, Father God. Amongst all this craziness in the world, you've called us to be the church, to be the light, to be the light that shines in all this craziness and, and the example. And we just thank you and we praise you for giving us your word, and for giving us the example to follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I'm going to, I'm going to, before I start reading, I better open my notes. <laughs> I finally get to look at them. So here it goes. I'll share a little bit about, I believe his name is Asaph. And his, his name means gathers. And he's accredited with 12 songs. Psalm 50, Psalms 
Psalm 73 through 83. So 12 Psalms. In the Bible it says he's the son of Berechiah. He's the ancestor of the Asaphites. And there were a guild of musicians in the first temple that was and he was appointed by David, along with three others. And they were in charge of singing in the house of God. In 2 Chronicles 5.12, he's also said to have performed at the dedication of Solomon's temple. So, he's a leader, he's a worshiper, amen? amen? And I heard, I first heard this, this, this song preached a long time ago by Pastor Robert Cavelli, right from this pulpit, and I was sitting over there, and when he preached it, it really touched me. And whenever I get into a place where I'm out of line, or I feel like I'm slipping, for some reason I remember that, I remember that song. Amen? Psalm 73, starting from verse 1 again. No doubt about it. God is good. Good to good people, good to the good hearted. But I nearly missed it. Missed seeing his goodness. I was looking the other way, looking up to the people at the top. Envying the wicked who have made it. Who have nothing to worry about, not a care in the whole wide world. Pretentious with arrogance. They wear the latest fashions in violence, pampered and overfed, decked out with silk bowls of silliness. They jeer, using words to kill. They bully their way with words. They're full of hot air, loud mouths disturbing the peace. People actually listen to them. Can you believe it? Like thirsty puppies, they lap up their words. And the first time Pastor Robert preached this, it stuck in my spirit. And I'm gonna be honest, in the last few, last month or so, I started looking at other people. My focus wasn't on God. I go to work and you have this, these tourists and they seem like they don't have a care in the world. You know? I know they're on vacation, I know they're having a good time. And I began to wonder, like, Lord, I've been serving you for 20 years. I've been tithing. I've been an offering giver. Why am I struggling? Why am I struggling? And I looked up the people. Man, they're, they're, they're having a time of their life. be honest, you know, I started questioning, I started looking, man, I asked the question, why, right, why, not a good question to ask God, or how come, right, and you know, I felt, I felt my, my steps, like Asa, I felt them slipping. I felt them slipping. And this this song came back to my heart. And I remember Pastor Corbelli preaching. And man, it touched me. I'm like, man. I feel myself slipping. I know I'm not supposed to be looking at everybody else and comparing what they do to what I do. 
Because I know what God spoke to me and what I'm called to do, where to do it, when to do it. I'm called to be part of the musician's guild like he, like he was. I'm part of the worship team like he was. Right? I'm like, man, come on. I'd like to understand it. Because I seem to be doing all the right things. I know how hard I work at trying to follow his word. Even when the world around me is just doing whatever they want to do. Everywhere you go, I mean, it's craziness. And I'm like, why do I feel like I'm slipping? Why do I feel like I'm doing the moonwalk? Huh? I'm like, I wonder if anybody else feels the way that I do. Verse 11 in the Message Bible goes, What's going on here? Is God out to lunch? Nobody's tending the store. The wicked get by with everything. They have made it, piling up riches. I've been stupid to play by the rules. What has it gotten me? A long run of bad luck, that's what. A slap in the face every time I walk out of the door. Now, I believe that Asaph, he wrote this down, but he didn't say it out, out loud. He was thinking it to himself, right? And he was watching all this corruption going on around him, whether it be the world, whether it be Christians, whether it be leaders that are misleading people. And he's looking around and he's seeing all this and he's thinking about it. And he writes it down on paper, but he doesn't say it out loud. Because in verse 15, the Message Bible, it says, If I had given in and talked like this, I would have betrayed your dear children. Still, when I tried to figure it out, all I got was a splitting headache. Until. Everybody say, until. Until. Until I entered the sanctuary of God. Amen. Amen. So here I am. I'm thinking all these things to myself. And I don't say anything, right? I'm like, I believe I'm like him. I'm thinking all these things. And I know it's wrong because I'm battling. The battle is in my mind. Right? I'm struggling. And I'm saying, man, I'm not supposed to be feeling like this, but I am. Help me to understand it. Help me to get over it. Help me to, to overcome this. Right? The greater is he that is in me, and he that is in the world. Right? And then, before Pastor Guys leave, we get our schedule for March, our labor schedule. And when I get my schedule, I circle all the days that I'm laboring. Right? And I'm going to post schedule, I'm going to labor schedule, I'm going to children's church post schedule, labor schedule, and I look like, I got three days circled. Like, yeah, did I do something wrong? I'm only laboring three days in the whole month. That's unusual. I'm usually, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine days, right? I love to work, I love to labor. I'm like, man, did I do something wrong, Lord? You know? But I'm like, oh, good, maybe you're going to preach. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. Can I get the preaching schedule now? I'm the last day before our pastor guys come back. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. 
Can I do something? I repent. I don't know what it is, but I repent. Right? But I've been blessed. For the last three and a half weeks, I've been sitting down and I've been listening to all the different ministers. Pastor Bobby, Pastor Rocky, Sister Special, Pastor L, Sister Renee, Pastor Cole, Pastor Papuni. All these ministers, all these pastors, all these associate pastors. And I actually got to take notes. I mean, I take notes all the time. But for this message, I got to go back through my notes. And the word says, until I went into the sanctuary of God. And so, I'm going to read some of my notes, okay? And it's um, not, a, not exactly what the ministers preached, because I can't write that fast. And if I did shorthand, I would never understand what I was writing. I didn't mean, um, you can watch the video later on, but just some of my notes and how being in the house of God has helped me get through the last few weeks. How the anointing of different ministers has affected me. Some of the notes that I took, we already know this, but some of it, they're like, they're like gold nuggets to me, amen? And I'm gonna start with February 9th, Pastor Rocky. The title for the message was, Keep Moving Forward. My first note, even when you don't know what to do, keep on moving. My second note, face our compass towards the future. The next message that Apostle Rafi preached, titled, Stay With Me. The first note that I have here is, the closer you get to God, the bigger He is in my life. Second note, we must finish what God has called us to do. And as the second part of that note, I have I have to finish my assignment. Amen? Another note, the enemy wants to take your integrity to stay with God, stay with Jesus. Amen? February 26, Pastor Bobby. Title, No Worry. My first note, Worry is a sin. Second note, The last battle of man will be in the mind. Oh man, my mind was badly. Number three, The root of worry is the spirit of fear. Pastor Orlando shared with us that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. Number four, we need to train our minds not to worry. Number five, fear and worry tell us that God cannot do it. Number six, Anything we put before God becomes our idol. March 1st, Pastor Rocky. Idol, there is no other. First note, what happens to the world doesn't have, doesn't have to happen to us. God says, have I not brought you this far? 
March 1st, on the lawn. Sister Special. That, no, that, that message really blessed me, Sister Special. Even if God doesn't do what we expect Him to do, will we continue to serve Him? Continue to give? And I said, put it this way, even if God doesn't do what I expect Him to do, will I continue to serve Him? Will I continue to give? Amen. March 4th, Pastor Holu, title, is it opposition or opportunity? Note one, when God brings opportunity into your life, the enemy will bring opposition. Number two, God uses our greatest opposition to become our greatest opportunity to build faith, trust, peace, Number three, God knows the outcome. We don't. Number four, trust in God and know that He will bring you out on the other side. Number five, God is still in control. God wants to move on my behalf. <clears throat> and on March 8th, that's the call from Holy Hill of Zion. Title, Encourage Yourself in the Lord. I don't know how many times I've heard that word before. Right? I've heard, I don't know, more than a handful of preachers preach the same word, same, same scriptures. But that night, that word was for me. My first note, Learn how to encourage yourself. Second note, do not allow a seed of anger, bitterness, envy, jealousy to cultivate in your heart. It grows into a murderous spirit. And man, that shook me. I don't know about you too, but I, I battle thoughts all the time. And I gotta rebuke them. Because I know they're false, I know they're not me. I know that's not the word of God. Right? It's like pulling weeds in the garden. And you see one, you gotta pull them out. You let them grow too long. The top may look like this, but the, the roots are going, going down deeper and deeper, amen? And then March 11th, this is the one where Pastor Russ had to give me an offering. I got a little bit shaky because, like, no, no, I don't preach tonight. No, no, you do, right? Okay, let me check, because <laughs> I don't have a word tonight. I mean, I have a devotion, so yeah, I can pull up a word. Amen. I'm ready in and out of season. I've been trained. But it was Pastor Kapuni preaching that night. And again, I got to sit, and I got to, I got to glean off the word and off of his, his anointing and what God was saying to him and through him. Amen. Note number one, you have to make it to the end to see the results of all your struggles. Note number two, all the things that I have gone through and the things that I am going through now are for His glory. And the title of His message that night was, God wants all the glory. Number three, this is me. When we ask why, it is for His glory. <laughs> right? So I got my answer when I asked why. It's for God's glory. Whatever you go through, whatever you, whatever happens to you, whatever God allows, Amen. it's for His glory. Amen. Amen. Yes. We glory. We give Him glory in the good times. We give Him glory in the tough times. We give Him all the glory. Amen. Note number four, 
Let God, let God's glory be seen in me. And uh, one more thing he shares, because I got the, I got the glean of the word and listening to all these ministers and pastors and share the word. I also got to get prayer too. You know, something that I, I don't normally get because. I'm tending to other things. The need of need, the needs of Apostle Rocky, needs of the church, what's happening around. Praying for other people. You know, not always putting me up there to get what I want. Or what the people need and what they want. Amen. March 5th. Pastor L. <laughs> now this blessed me. It's time to take the gloves off. Right? That's his, that was his title. And the first thing that I wrote down or as, in, as my notes is you get bloody when you take off the gloves. Right? You get bloody when you take off the gloves. But it's Christ's blood that's on our hands. Not our blood. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you get bloody when you take off when you take off the gloves. <laughs> Pastor Al ran over there and grabbed the shield. And I was like, oh man, I should have made one over there. A red one. <laughs> one blue one, one red one. And then I can stand up and yell, God wills it! Yeah. Now you got inside joke, right? The men know about that, right? Inside joke from the kingdom of heaven. Red and blue. <laughs> God wills it. <laughs> Second note. I am the church. The church is not the building. Number three. Know who you are. If you don't know who you are. It's hard. If you, don't know who you, are. If you don't know who you are in Christ. What is done for you? Amen. I'm blessed because I've been through a lot, going through a lot. So when I look back and know that I'm still standing and I'm still here, man, it gives me such, such a pump of adrenaline inside of me. Because I overcame all that. I didn't forget where I came from. Amen. I get to draw from my past. The only time I want to go in my past is to, is to know that God delivered me there. He brought me through that tough time. He's going to bring me to this one. And He's going to take me to the next one. And the next one. Amen. Number four. Live fearless. If you don't know who you are, how can you live, live fearless? If you think, continue to look at the world, all you're going to see is fear. You, like Pastor Randall shared, you can see it in the people's eyes. They're afraid. They don't know what's going to happen. They don't know. They don't know who their source is. They don't know who their provider is. Right? You get all these panic buying, hoarding, and I saw something, I think it's even in Australia, that they're fighting for pa toilet paper. Yeah. I'm like, man, I thought it was just the island mentality here because we get 80% of our goods shipped in. But no, it's happening all over the United States. It's happening in, happening in other countries. I'm not sure what the big thing about toilet paper is. But I went to the Philippines and when I was little, and they don't have toilet paper. <laughs> but somehow you get along. You make it. You make it work, <laughs> ain't it? 
I remember I was about five or six years old and I had to use the bathroom. My mom takes me to the outhouse and it's late at night and I'm crying. There's no toilet paper. Don't worry, you get through it, son. <laughs> you make it. You live. I'm here. I'm alive. I made it. Thank you, Jesus. And number five, when it's time to take the gloves off, is go on the offensive. Take ground. Monday night, March 6, Monday night prayer meeting, Sister Renee, I was blessed, fakes, frauds, and foolishness, number one, stay in your word to identify the fakes, frauds, and foolishness in the world, even when people claim to be Christians, preachers, ministers, whatever. You cannot know the truth unless you have the truth in you. And you cannot get it in you unless you read your word. Unless you unless you have it in you, you cannot draw it out. You can't draw water on a dry well. How are you going to draw the word out of you if you don't have anything in there, amen? And also bless. Like I said, these are all my notes from past ministers in the last three and a half weeks or what and it got me to this point until I entered the sanctuary of God then I saw the whole picture the slippery road you put them on with a final crash in a ditch of delusions, in the blink of an eye disaster, a blind curve in the dark, a nightmare. We wake up and rub our eyes, nothing. There's nothing to them, and there never was. When I was believed, believer and bitter, totally consumed by envy, I was totally ignorant, a dumb ox in your very presence. I am still in your presence, but you've taken my hand, you wisely and tenderly lead me, and then you bless me. You're all I want in heaven, you're all I want on earth. When my skin sags and my bones get brittle, God is rock firm and faithful. Look, those who are left you are falling apart, deserters. They'll never be heard from again. But I'm in the very presence of God. Oh, how refreshing it is. I've made Lord God my home. God, I'm telling the world what you do. So you kind of woke up, huh? Just like me, praise God, praise the Lord. <laughs> when I started studying and going over my notes, I realizing all the word that got poured out into me in these last few weeks. I was blessed. I actually got edified. I got I got built up. And that's why I can stand here today and preach and share his word, share his love. I heard a pastor share today that all this coronavirus thing that's going on and What the enemy wants is he doesn't want us to communicate. He doesn't want us to talk. Right? The guidelines are six feet away. My my wingspan is about six feet. I can still talk loud enough where people can hear me. So if I want to share the word of God, if I want to share God's goodness and what Jesus Christ did for me, I can still do it. Right? And so can each and every one of you. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I don't know about all these other cities, all these big churches getting 
shut down. You know? But, but, hey, praise God, we stepped into the future. We got a YouTube channel, we got Facebook, we're streaming. For those of you who use this excuse to stay home, hey, you don't have an excuse to miss, miss the message, Amen. the service. Amen. You got a computer, you got a phone. I, it's been a long time since I've seen a flip phone. I know a few people that still have them. <laughs> but almost every phone out there now is a smartphone, right? And you, you can screen, you can do Facebook, you can do uh, Instagram. Pinterest, whatever social media you, you, you know, host your boat. <laughs> I'm not much of a social media guy. Um, but I do scan it every once in a while. But you have no excuse. If you watch the message at home, you watch the message at, at, at your workplace if they allow, it to, allow you to. There's really no excuse. But we're the church, right? Not the building. We're the church. And I just wanted to share this one testimony. I met a gentleman at the Monokai Hotel. And we started talking. And I, I first met him in the gym, working out in the gym. And we got to talking on the lawn. And he wanted to see some of my artwork. So I brought some, showed him. He decided he wanted to buy a piece, so I sold him a piece. And I'm not sure why, but I was sitting at my post, and he walks up the stairs, and he goes to use the restroom, and he comes back out, and he stops, and he starts talking to me. And he starts sharing that. I believe the conversation went something like this. It doesn't look like it, man. But I've got brain cancer. And it starts sharing a little bit. And my heart just goes out to him because if he had never, if he didn't share it with me, he would have never known. And so I asked him, can I pray for you? Pray every morning. But yeah, you can pray for me. So I prayed with him. I was going to invite him to church, but I didn't see him the rest of the day. And then he went home that following Sunday. So, but you never know what people are going through out there. And it put me in, in, in check because you know, here I am thinking all these things and feeling all these feelings. But man, I'm walking. I'm, 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 I'm healthy. I'm not concerned about tomorrow. Because I know where I'm going to be if God decides to take me. Amen? I'm not fighting for my life. Like I said, I don't know why he shared it, but he shared it and I was blessed. Because it put me in check, gave me another perspective. You know, every once in a while when I, when I used to work in the hospital, I had that perspective change, uh, change all the time because when I'd walk into a room, you'd see somebody laying on the bed, tubes and respirators and everything. And it kind of puts you in check. And like, hey, you need to be grateful. You need to be thankful. You've got arms and legs, a mouth, eyes, ears, whatever. You're not laying on your back looking up at the ceiling, hoping you make it tomorrow. And so, when I read the message version, until I came into the sanctuary of God, until I came into the Lord's house, 
We've heard it before. Don't stop coming to service if you can make it. Like I said at the beginning, I'm blessed you chose to be the church tonight. Amen. It's not about the numbers, it's not about how many people came. But I'm blessed you chose to be the church tonight. And I'm blessed I got to deliver this message. So for all of you out there in streaming land, video, YouTube, wherever. You have no excuse. Technology today, you can get the word, you can get a service, you can get a, a, a pastor preaching anywhere, anytime. But I'm going to put this salvation call out to you. That if you've never received Jesus into your life, I will be blessed and have the opportunity to pray with you. To help you, to guide you, to be part of the, the family, to be the church. I believe I know everybody in the house. I believe everyone is saved, born again. Amen. But let's go through the prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I believe that you died for my sins and you rose again on the third day that I may have everlasting life. I ask you into my heart to be the Lord of my life, to guide me, to show me the fact that you want me to walk. Thank you for your forgiveness. I bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, those of you online, you got to be the church. You're welcome to come here. You don't have a church. You can come, you can call the office. They can be directly to a Bible I would believe in church, wherever you are. And if the Lord has touched your heart, and you want to sow a seed into this ministry, into this church, you can go to the website, www.wordatruthmong.org. Right? Okay? And uh, they got a button there you can, you can, you can give if you want to give. You can check out all the new things that that's happening here. And we just thank you. We welcome you. If you're here on Maui, you don't have a church, come visit us. We just thank you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.